When the heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne, Franz Ferdinand, was assassinated in Sarajevo in 1914, it resulted in the First World War, and with it, the downfall of Austria-Hungary. But prior to this, there were already great political and social tensions in the dual monarchy, and therefore, a breakup of the great empire always posed a great threat to the emperor. For this reason, some political masterminds working for the Austrian Archduke Franz Ferdinand developed a reform plan for the ailing dual monarchy, the United States of Greater Austria. In order to unite all the ethnic groups and nations of the multi-ethnic state, a plan was drawn up based on the model of the United States of America. It was supposed to keep Austria and Hungary together and guarantee their status as a great power for a long time. But how did this plan come into existence? What did it look like in detail and why was it never implemented? Austria-Hungary was a multi-ethnic state from the beginning, consisting of a total of 11 nationalities. Despite this, only the Austrians and the Hungarians were truly able to have a say in politics. Although they made up 44% of the population, this meant that more than half of the nationalities had no say whatsoever and were therefore very unhappy. These other nine ethnic groups were the Czechs, the Polish people, the Serbs, the Ukrainians, the Romanians, the Slovaks, the Slovenes, the Croats, and the Italians. In these areas, uprisings and revolts were frequent, and many demanded more autonomy or even complete independence. Another problem was the division of the crown lands, that is, the individual territorial divisions of the monarchy. The boundaries of these were based on century-old wars and territorial disputes that often stretched far back into the time of the Holy Roman Empire. However, they had little in common with the actual division of the various ethnic groups in the dual monarchy. The Austro-Hungarian heir to the throne, Franz Ferdinand in particular, recognized early on the potential for conflict arising from ethnic tensions, in which a small spark could tear the empire apart at any time. So he worked out a plan with a committee of political masterminds that was intended to ease tensions in the empire and lead to a reconciliation of the various ethnic groups and nations. The plan was finally published in 1906. According to this plan, the borders of the various crown lands were to be completely redrawn, and 15 new constituent states were to be founded, which from then on would be based on the ethnically and linguistically predominant groups of the respective areas. The Austro-Hungarian Empire was to be transformed into the United States of Greater Austria, and, following the example of the United States, each of the 15 federal states was to have an equal say. In addition, conflicts within the individual federal states were to be prevented by drawing the borders in such a way that only one main language was spoken in the respective area. All in all, it is fair to say that a lot of thought went into the reorganization, since the borders resemble some of the modern-day nations, such as Austria, Hungary, Slovenia, and Croatia. The federal states would have been as uniform as very few other nation-states in Europe. There would have been only a few German-speaking exclaves in various federal states, such as Transylvania. But other than that, the various parts of the United States of Greater Austria would have been very homogenous. But why did the plan ultimately fail anyway? For one thing, many ethnic groups did not want a redivision of their national borders, but rather complete independence. In addition, they suspected that the previous rulers would certainly not relinquish power completely, and this was the case. The Austrian and Hungarian elites feared a loss of power, since from then on they would no longer be based on two ethnic groups, but on eleven. Besides, many conservative politicians in particular were very unhappy with the radical redrawing of the borders that had been created over centuries, as they considered the borders to be invaluable. This made it impossible to implement the plan and everything remained the same. Just over ten years later, the Austro-Hungarian Empire broke up into many nation-states. Although the plan was a good idea in theory, it could not be put into practice because of too many opposing opinions.